Meanwhile, take a look at markets, mostly a little bit mixed to lower, but really, you guys, I'm going to call this unchanged, but it is wrapping up what has been a banner September and a banner third quarter. Investors remaining cautious ahead of the jobs numbers that we just talked about that are all coming out on Friday, but you have the S&P 500 now on track for the best start to a year since 1997. This is after posting the third straight winning week ending on Friday. Let's do all of this with Scott Martin, Kingsview Wealth Management CIO and Fox Business Contributor. Talk to me about those gains. This was supposed to be a bad September, you know, as Septembers usually are, and yet you're having a, a killer start to the year. Can <laughs> this continue? Yes, I think it can, Taylor. And you know what? It's funny how things don't work out always the way that we all plan, or at least that the experts uh, tell us they are because you're right we're, we're, we're partying like it's 1997 and I think Taylor that's uh, for good reason uh, the economy as I've always said is better than most people think I think the data has been a little bit wishy-washy yes but I think the underlying themes of the data has been largely allowed to uh, celebrate and support the stock prices and frankly even in spite of an election coming up the the economy I believe is as strong enough as as such to where investors and market participants are allowing themselves the, the thought that, you know what, even as great as the economy is, even Kamala Harris probably can't screw it up. So I think we've got a lot of things to be positive about. But again, you guys know my take. I'm worried that the Fed made a pretty big policy mistake here just a couple weeks ago, and I'm worried about how that could come down the pike as far as more inflation. So, Scott, talk to me about interest rates a little bit, because they made the cut. But, you know, you look at market interest rates have not come down the way that you thought they might. Is that the story you're telling me that, hey, the market thinks we're going to get a strong economy no matter who ends up in the White House? Yeah, and I think, Brian, the market is starting to say, well, wait a second, this might bring back some inflationary trends, which would basically mm. steepen the curve, which you're right, man. If you look at when we went into the Fed meeting, uh, the rates pretty rates fell pretty pretty well. I mean, they felt they plummeted pretty pretty precisely, and then after the meeting, rates bounced up and they've come leveled off a little bit, but they've come up again today, as we've seen. So the market seems to be telling a little bit of a different story. So I think that should tell the Fed, or at least have the Fed take some pause. I mean, Neil Cavuto had Austin Goolsbee on uh, last hour, and he's kind of mushy when it comes to if I could say that about him when it comes to what they're going to do and I think they kind of realize that maybe they overstepped here this time and therefore they don't want to get the market so addicted to more rate cuts in the future especially if as you guys just said with uh, Joe Lavonia if the market is expecting what a three percent plus GDP number for right. Q3. It's starting to become more obvious to me why they gave the market the cut that they did. I don't think they're as stupid as uh, people like to give them credit for, Scott. But let's <laughs> move on from that and talk about what you can buy when we're at record levels. It's tough to want to get in. What are the bargains out there? Yeah, so two things, uh, Jackie, that are related to the hurricane, unfortunately. And my heart goes out to everybody that was in the, in the path of those things, including a, a place that I have in Florida that got hit slightly, but certainly uh, hit at somewhat of a level. So, look, uh, two things when it comes to um, cleanup and kind of taking care of things. Caterpillar um, being a company that's out there that could be out there using the equipment and moving stuff around and mm -hmm. kind of getting stuff rebuilt. And then waste management as well, picking up some of the debris, the trash, the waste that's out there after uh, certainly a lot of the structure we've had. So CAT and WM are two stocks that I like here and two defensive kind of names, guys, too, as we go into what I think is just going to be a bumpy time. And then lastly, how could we uh, forget uh, Joe Biden's, I guess, speech or address uh, this morning and the coughing and the hacking and all the seemingly uh, throat problems he might have had today. So how about some Johnson & Johnson, another defensive <laughs> stock, uh, one that also makes a uh, cough medicine, stuff for your throat and things that uh, maybe Joe Biden might need, too, if he speaks again. Oh, but we're all going to need Martin. it. We're all going to need it this fall, Scott, because you know how it is. I'm telling you. So it's the, it is the season. He's just a little bit ahead of us as usual. Well, plus when you're cheering for the Vikings loudly, sometimes you oh, get a horse on. throat. And did you know, somebody four say and four and oh, Brian? That's right. Thank you, Scott. Scott. I ha wore a purple suit today yeah, by accident and Brian can't I stop trolling me every time. <laughs> Every time, every Monday, Taylor. That's right. We'll see. We'll get you one of these days. Scott Martin, thanks so much.